Okay, Ippy in 6.30, and uh, the, well, I'm going to call to order the Hadley Conservation Committee, Commission for Tuesday, November 22nd to order. First on the business, on the agenda, is Notice of Intent, 13 Russell Street Redevelopment, DEP file number 170-288. Berkshire Design Group, on behalf of Triangle Properties, LLC, is proposing to redevelop the currently vacant lot at 13 Russell Street, formerly a gas station, into a coffee shop. The lot is 12,197 square feet, and the resource areas <laughs> present on the site are restricted to the, what does the AE stand for? Uh, that's just like the code for 100 year. <laughs> okay, it's uh, AE flood zone, 100 year flood. Site visit conducted uh, July 27th by Shyla Davis and Doug Sorrell. So these folks have requested a continuation to our January 10th meeting um, as they are still going through some processes with other town departments that may impact their wetland implications. Um, so if the board would be accommodating to their request, uh, they'd like to come back January 10th, 2023, which would be our first meeting of next year right. at uh, 6.30. Sounds good. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, request a motion for that to continue to the January 10th CONCOM meeting. I'll make it. Okay, uh, motion by Gordon. Gordon, Gordon. sorry. <laughs> Senior moment for a minute. Second by Gary, who is here on uh, by Zoom. Um, any other comments from the board of uh, CONCOM? No. Okay, I'm uh, hearing none. All those in favor of uh, continuing to January 10th, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, it's done. You know us. Okay, next on the agenda is request for determination of ap applicability 139 West Street. Michael Ewen, did I get it right? Ewen. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, seeks to construct a breezeway between two existing structures on his property which lies within the buffer zone. So, you have the floor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we bought a 1890 Victorian at the very end of the common, south end of the common, uh -huh. and there was an old small barn behind the property, mm -hmm. and we took that down and replaced it on the same footprint with a um, family room and so that is 16 feet behind the back of the existing house and so we'd like to connect the house and the family room with a breezeway mm -hmm. it's in the floodplain the house and the shed well I would call it a shed are 30 inches above the ground and we'd like to continue that on with an enclosed structure so that you know, we can go back and forth in the winter. Mm -hmm. um. yeah, so there's some drawings in here of the proposed work. This is the property. Um, and I believe that you were in the buffer zone, the 100 foot buffer zone. Yes. Um, I don't believe this one is Which in the floodplain. Well. But. Yes. Um. I could be wrong. No, nope. um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just. Yeah, has has uh, Michael submitted all the paperwork that yep, is yep. due? Right here, uh, it was posted in the Gazette. Um, description of the project, and um, if you flip through, there's some more detailed drawings of the breezeway itself. Right. <laughs> um, so, so all the work is outside the hundred foot uh, buffer zone. Is it in the buffer zone? You said. Yeah, buffer zone. Uh, well, what is? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear Gary's question. You said the work is being done in the buffer zone of which? The, the floodplain or the wetlands? Uh, wetlands. It's it's buffer zone of wetlands. And so it's outside of the 35 foot zone, right? It's, yeah, it's outside of 35, you're, you're more than 35 feet away, um, but within the 100 feet. And, it's big. and there's no there's work in the 100 foot, I mean the 100 year floodplain? Sorry, you were both speaking at the same time. Gary, what was that? So there's no filling the 100-year 100, 100 floodplain? No, I don't believe that the property was in the 100-year floodplain. Not unless you don't. Okay, the foundation's on Diamond Pier, 
so there's no foundation work to okay. disturb the soil. Okay. That. Okay. Good. So very minimal disturbance. disturbance. Okay. That's great. Okay. Um, yep. I don't have a problem with this on. So I don't know how you, how the other uh, board members feel, but uh, yeah, it makes sense to do it. Yeah. So it would be a negative determination, right? Yep. Yeah. So we would look through, um, if you think that it would be appropriate to move forward, then you'd look through the negative determination and just determining which, um, which number it is. We're describing the research is in the request of the new So it is in the within the buffer zone um, as defined in the mm -hmm. regulations, but will not alter area subject to protection. Right. So it does not require act. notice of intent. Um. Okay. So uh, negative three is. Am I reading this correctly? What do you think, Gary? I agree. Okay. So we check, should I? Um, you have to look for a motion to issue. Okay. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> I apologize, guys. I'm really rusty at this. So okay. You're doing great. You're doing great. Yep. No. So we just have to have a, a motion to actually issue the determination. So that makes sh make sure that everyone uh, votes to approve it. Okay. So I'm looking for a motion to accept the negative determination, uh, negative three, and uh, I'll make it. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. Uh, motion by Gordon, seconded by Gary. Are there any other comments? No further discussion. Any other discussion? Is a negative determination mean it's okay? Yes. yes, that means it, yeah, that, that, yeah, that, yeah, that means we have to put something on the piece of paper. <laughs> okay. so negative means that no, it does not require further documentation or further permit under the Wetland Protection Act. Positive look, would be yeah, look it's a kind panic, of reverse. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That was a good question. <laughs> okay, so I, I checked this box, number three. Yep, correct? Yep, number three, and then we just have to make sure that um, it's signed. Right. Okay, um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other comments from the from the audience. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Gary? Aye. Okay. Aye. And I'll, I'll sign the paperwork after the meeting. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so we got the signatures right here, right? Yes. Yep. yep. Perfect. And I'll take care of the rest after you guys sign. Yeah. So um, I'll have to uh, take this back to the office and scan it, and I can send you a digital copy and the physical copy of the permit, um, so you can have for your records likely tomorrow. I'll send it in the mail. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, of We're trying to get a contractor right now, gotcha. and then we'll submit it to the town for the, you know, the building. Oh, yes. Yep. He's going to come down later. Okay. Cool. Good thank enough. You. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Third on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability on 87 Rocky Hill Road. Uh, Joe Galvin seeks to establish a one half acre chicken and asparagus farm on his property at 87 Rocky Hill Road. Site visit conducted 1116 by Shyla Davis and Jason Galvin. So Jason has requested a continuation as well um, due to his uh, inability to be here tonight with um, no Zoom connection where he is for um, today. So if the board would be open to accommodating that request, um, he'd like to appear at the December 13th meeting. Um, uh, December 13th. Yep, so that would be our, our next scheduled hearing. Right. In just a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion with you. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. A motion by Gary, seconded by Gordon. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the board? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you. Okay. No. Request for determination of applicability 56 River Drive. Marjorie Southworth, did I get it right? Yes. 
Okay, good. Seeks to construct a new residence on the lot. In 2015, file number 170-174 was approved with an order of conditions to do similar work, which was never conducted. The current proposed work exists on a smaller footprint and is further from the river. There is riverfront, floodplain, and NHESP present on site. This is the one that we conducted a site visit on this morning, yes, correct? Yes, so um, Edwin, myself, and Steve Simkowitz, who's not here um, tonight, we conducted a site visit with the folks present. Um, so if you want to give a presentation um, on behalf of Marjorie, then the floor is yours. Thanks, Thank you Alex. very much for having us. Uh, we appreciate the time here. Uh, yes, as you might be aware, back a number of years and, ago. And you are who? I, I'm sorry, Tim Nyhart. Thank you. Close your drive. I'm just helping out the Thank um, you. owner Thank you. with this application. Uh, so as you were aware, back a number of years ago, there was an approval for a new residence on the site uh, with a existing shed to stay. Um, Mrs. Southworth has purchased the property. Uh, she is actually going to build a, uh, a house that's actually even smaller than what was approved. She wishes to take down the old sheds. So, so the, the sheds off to the right hand side of the building that's correct, are going to go? side, yes. Okay. Yes, those, those will be coming down, which were proved to stay right. uh, from the previous owner. Again, the house will be smaller. It's going to go f further, uh, it will be closer to the road than what was approved in the past. Mm -hmm. There will not be a basement, there will be a crawl space only. It, there will be a crawl space. It will be a crawl space. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Um, so the plans there um, are, were recently done, uh, surveyed by Randy Iser um, that show the proposed dwelling and the existing structures are in that like cross hatched. Um, yep, yeah, right there. That's the existing trailer home, and then to the right is the shed existing. Right. So that's the one that they want to take down. Right. Uh, which is not in uh, usable condition as is as we saw today. Anyways. No. Um, we, when we looked at it uh, this morning, there was, have you decided which trees are going, which trees, is, uh, trees no, are leaving? No, uh, we haven't decided. Certainly there will be a couple trees right around the existing uh, mobile home that will have to come down okay. to fit the new house. No, we haven't decided on all those. And certainly what we will do for you is to mark those on the site plan and give it to to your board thank for you. a further presentation. Thank approval. you. Thank you. The, the, the owner does not want to take down many trees at all. Right. Only, only what's needed to build and give her a little bit of view. Right. But anything dead, certainly, we'll show that on the site plan and have those approved by you. Okay. Good. Um, this is a substandard lot, am I correct? That's correct. It's legally non-conforming at this Okay, time. at this time. So then uh, you still have to go to before the planning board? No, I have to go in front of the zoning board. Mm -hmm. Planning board only deals with commercial. Even okay. though it's in a commercial zone, it's residential, does not need planning board approval. It's approval it will have required. the ZBA. Now, the previous design was approved by the zoning board though that's not a uh, legal binding at this point mm -hmm. and we have again we have in we moved the house closer but uh, the the next lot the next properties on both sides those dwellings are actually even going to be closer than what this is so the hope is that uh, they will approve a finding for the zoning setback. Okay. And so, so some more background is that the uh, permit that was previously approved was permitted through a notice of intent. So there was an order of conditions issued. Uh, right. And there's a question to be had of uh, whether a notice of intent would be required 
um, for this. And a decision may not uh, be possible this evening just because we need more information about the trees. Um, and I know that I haven't walked you folks through the Natural Heritage Endangered Species um, notification. If I'm correct, I don't think I gave you guidance on that part of it at all. So I believe that there is habitat um, mapped on part of that parcel, so they would just need to take a look at it and see if it's something that requires um, well, further it, work. Uh, it wasn't. Was that something that was required the last time around? That's something that I would have to confirm. Um, I was not able to locate a copy of the um, actual permit application. I only have a copy of the order of conditions, which you had attached with your uh, application, which I appreciated you pulling from the, uh, the registry. Um, so I have to find the original application. Is that applicable if it overlaps with where the building is going to go, or just if it's anywhere on the property? Just out um, of curiosity. I'm not 100 percent sure. Just I because think it's anywhere a, on the property. Yeah, that's a but state agency. And I think what what happened was that the state, in its infinite wisdom, decided to say, "Guess what? You guys are natural resource or natural." natural heritage site. Well, that's something they update their maps on a, a regular basis. So they just issued a new map um, this past summer uh, with updated habitat. And they do estimated habitat and priority habitat. So think area that they think species are using and area that's extremely critical for species. Um, and being along the river, that could include um, sometimes things that live in the water where that likely wouldn't be impacted because you're not doing anything down on the bank. Um, so it's just something that I want to confirm whether or not you need to do that. Um, that's not through the Conservation Commission, but it is a conservation concern that you would still need uh, to get that review done. But I can give you more information on that once I can especially look at the previous permit. Um, I've also reached out to DEP just to pick their brain to see like, hey, we previously you know, approved things through a notice of intent. Is an RDA sufficient this time or not? Um, just to make sure that we're mm -hmm. not going to land you in any kind of <laughs> sticky situation. You don't want to get into any trouble, trust me. <laughs> We've gotten our hands slapped numerous times in the past, and we don't want to, <clears throat> it's, it's not a good feeling. And so we don't want to do it ever again. So we just want to make sure that everything, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed before we go to the next step. That's what we're after. Um, you're not gonna uh, are, are we gonna be asking for a continuance on this one that's something that um i would recommend just because it sounds like there's some more details that need to get worked out um, so we fully understand what's going on like with the trees and i don't know if there's any changes um to like the the footprint or is that pretty set in stone that's that's set in stone? That's okay. set in stone. Okay. So what's needed from us, just the trees? Uh, yeah, just understanding where, mm -hmm. where the trees, um, which trees we want to remove, um, and then we can kind of rope that all in, and then just waiting on that guidance and kind of looking over some of the previous documentation, because I want to obviously, you know, make sure that this is being done uh, fairly and in accordance with, you know, kind of our, our past selves. Yeah. Be consist consistency, yeah. so to speak. Um, and like We I said, all know what happened last year with the town yeah. towns. That's so, so we've gotten okay. devastated. Well, I think that that's a totally separate yeah, that's, issue yeah, relative to what we're talking about. This is yeah. something that's been approved, a very minor um, Are you going to be able to do it by the December 13th meeting? We don't know what we have to do. We have to. So we're, um, yeah, so <laughs> I can follow up with you folks. And I'm, I'm sorry for the, any confusion or, or um, whatnot. I just, I wasn't able to find a copy of the actual application, only the outcome of the application. Um, and I just want to make sure that I understand kind of like more of the full scope. That was before the time that I was with the Conservation Commission. Um, and the, with the trees, I know that the board would just want to know which trees, how yep. many, uh, just kind of thinking about the, the big picture impact to yeah, resource the, areas. The, the trees won't be an issue by that time. Yeah, so if you uh, were I'm able to. the rest of what your requests are. Yeah, and, and the rest of that being the natural heritage side of things. Yeah. Or, what does that entail, I guess? So yeah. that, that's a separate state agency. So they're, they're under Massachusetts Wildlife, um, part of the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, and they handle endangered and threatened species uh, protections. So what would happen is you would notify them, and I can give you all of the information of how to go through that process, and you can likely email um, the main woman there and have her just do a quick review, and like I can do that introduction through like a CC 
um, on an email, if that would be helpful. And usually they're pretty prompt at replying whether or not you are exempt. I just don't know what is exempt or is not exempt under their rules because they are working with the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act, which is a separate regulation than the Wetlands Protection Act, which we take care of here. Uh, but the, they kind of go hand in hand um, because wetlands are often endangered species habitat and there's some things like riverfront area that Even we that worry is. about. So. It, I would not consider that part. It's like a Venn diagram. <laughs> well, so it is. I, I, yeah. Well, we've, we've had times in the past where the natural heritage has um, yes. been very involved in, in notice of intent applications. And uh, Gary, I don't know if you have anything to chime in about um, regarding that. And I, I don't want to be mis- I, I don't see a problem with National Heritage and Asian Species Act. But the fact that we did a notice of intent before with order conditions, I think in this case, we still need to uh, continue some type of order conditions on this project. Right. I don't have a problem with the project. I think it's going to be fine. But we have to find a way out to make the DEP happy with the, not national heritage, but the fact that we need all the commissions. Right. Okay. So the concern being that previously this work required a different kind of permit. Um, so needing to require get... Required order commissions. And this should require the same. I have no problem with this prop of this, uh, this proceeding. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing. It's going to be less impact than before, but we need to do the proper documentation. Right. I agree. I agree. I agree with you, Gary. I think we need to do the proper... Uh, it says here on the order of conditions, uh, pen, uh, penciled in is construction and compensatory must. storage must meet approval of building inspector. Yeah, there won't be any compensatory we, storage. We, we previously approved this project. Right. And, and you talk about a crawl space. The reason for the crawl space is the elevate the structure above the 100 year floodplain, correct? Uh, sorry, what was that? Tim, question for you. Tim. You talk about a crawl space. Is that because you get above the 100 year floodplain? Why is well, that? Yeah. Space? Why do we need a crawl space? She didn't want a, a basement, and, and it will help in regards to not triggering anything within the floodplain area. Okay. Well, a basement is not allowed in a floodplain, but That's the question right. I have well, is, not, is it well, elevated? Not necessarily per se. What the, what the regulation stipulates that any, any floor, and that includes a basement, must be above flood stage or the ability to Min minimize the amount of flooding within that area. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, best thing to do is don't have a basement. I mean, it's also for insurance purposes right. for the for them. So you put a crawl space in, and that way you can at least get to the um, utilities and everything better. But it it just it it just makes things a little bit much better for everybody. So I'm sorry these. But the reason for the crawl space is you get the first floor above the 100 year floodplain, correct? Is the crawl space going to bring the first floor above the 100 year floodplain? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. That puts the first floor well above the flood. Good. Which I'm fine with. I don't have a problem with this proceeding forward. We just have to find a way to go through the process. So I guess um, I'll kind of backpedal a little, and um, I'll, I'm not sure exactly whether we can, you know, withhold permit based on natural heritage, so I, I don't want to misspeak right. on that front. I can uh, get more information and just touch base with them whether or not that's a separate um, thing or if it's contingent. Uh, so I don't want to give you the wrong information, but it sounds like the biggest concern is just the consistency and making sure that we do the correct legal um, forms, so just like on paper doing everything as required by the state department of environmental protection uh, because these are their forms and you know we could issue a, a determination and then they could come back and say well no that needs to be a notice of intent so we just want to clarify with them before giving you a hard decision to make sure that so you're we're based with Greer on all this yep just a matter of a different piece of paperwork yes. yeah a different piece of paperwork um it's something that just to make sure that we're filing it um, so that you know you don't have to come back to this, um, okay. or you know they don't issue some kind of um, superseding okay. kind of determination saying, well, hey, it should have been this other way. We you know want to make sure that we save you the headache. Um, 
and with those, the, at least with the trees too. I, I should be able to get an answer from the state uh, within the next week or two. Okay. Um, hopefully he's right. working tomorrow. Well, <laughs> I sent him an email this afternoon, but with the holiday, um, might be next week. But is there any particular way you want to see the trees? Like, could that be a photo, or does it need to be on the plans? Like, is there any? Well, I think historically, we historically we've always, if you just take a paint can and spray the spray okay. the tree, yeah. you know, just to spray identify ring around them. It. We just need to know which ones are going to leave, which ones are going to stay. That's all. Sure. Yeah, and we'll bark it on a set of plans, okay. and then Thank you. we'll we'll tag the trees. Yeah, usually we just have people tag them, them and then or tag them is fine. Yeah, yeah. And we don't need them necessarily on the plans. I mean, it can help, but um, just tagging them in that way, we know like how many and then which ones. And you know, usually there's a requirement, especially on the bank, to keep as much of the stump as um, as reasonably possible. Right. That's the, that's the other thing because of where you're going to be building. Mm -hmm. Keep the stump in the ground. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. She, oh, yeah. she doesn't want to lose her house. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep. Um, so that would be it. Would it be the tree information, mm -hmm. and then potentially just filling out separate paperwork before the December. Yep. And there's a right. possibility of filling out uh, uh, paperwork for the natural heritage program, but that's a separate entity. And I can just send a quick email um, tomorrow to uh, Melanie Cheeseman. She's the person who kind of runs the um, state program, so I can. Say, hey, they are property. usually pretty good. I've had yeah. dealings with them, and they've been within five or six days. Okay. Eaten, or less sometimes. Or with less. She's working from home now, and yeah. she's just on her computer. So I, I get email responses usually same day. Um, yeah. And if you'd like, I can CC you on that just so you're in direct okay. communication. And that's, um, just to clarify, a separate work stream. Yeah, that's a separate work okay. stream. That's something that we just identify like, oh, hey, they okay. have mapped property on there you should Got go it. talk to them Got it. so okay. may maybe we don't have to wait for them to make a decision um, okay so. Great. yeah so do you think we will have that information by the december 13th meeting i think so um, i think that I'll, I'll get an answer from dep natural heritage and then it sounds like the trees are pretty easy to do yeah, in the next I mean, couple we're weeks, not taking so. down we're yeah. not taking down a few trees so. yeah, yeah. And, well, you know, i know that well we do uh, yeah. Shyla and I noticed there were, there were some dead ones in front yeah. anyway. And so. we want to make sure everyone's safe, you know. Will those yeah. need to be marked? Because we're not going to necessarily be able to identify those without the leaves on them. The oh, ones, you're going to, the yeah. ones we saw were dead. Okay. They, they were okay. dead. We could if tell. there's no buds on them. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, don't, yeah. don't, don't bust your nuts trying to do it. Okay. Um, we might call you Eddie. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll uh, entertain a motion to continue to the December 13th meeting. Is that so moved. Okay. Second. Second. We have a motion by Gary, seconded by Gordon, to continue the request for determination of applicability on 56 River Drive. Any other comments? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying an aye. 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 It's unanimous. Gary? Hi. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so, for all your time and communication, and we'll definitely be in touch. Great. <laughs> Feel free to call email with questions. Okay. And happy holidays. Okay. Who's the same guy on the right? Hmm? Okay, uh, we have a request for determination of applicability of 350 Russell Street. All Points Technology Corporation on behalf of Celco Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless seek to install a communications facility on the roof of the building at 350 Russell Street. The work, the proposed work includes portions in the buffer zone, site visit conducted 1122 by Shyla Davies and All Points representatives. Where is 350 Russell Street? That's the Hillwood Suites Hotel. Or Homewood Suites. Homewood or Hillwood? It's Something uh, sweet. Homewood Suites. Homewood Suites. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So you're just going to put uh, communication equipment on top of the building, correct? That's correct. Uh, let me introduce myself first. Okay. So my name is Dean Gustafson. I'm a senior wetland scientist, professional soil scientist with All Points Technology. Here tonight on behalf of Selco Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless. Verizon is proposing a rooftop uh, wireless telecommunications facility on the Homewood Suites facility 
It's located uh, near the Home Depot facility behind Chipotle's. Uh huh. Okay. And we have um, seven resources on the on the subject property and proximity to the subject property. On this presentation board, there is an intermittent stream located in blue right. in kind of the southern portion of the property. This is Homewood Suites Hotel building here. There's boarding vegetated wetlands highlighted in green. This red line is your 35 foot non disturbed bylaw buffer zone. Uh -huh. And then this orange line is the 100 foot buffer zone. Okay. And so the majority of Verizon's activities will be on top of the roof of the hotel. There will be a small uh, ground equipment uh, facility. It's about a little over 100 square feet in size. It's fairly small. It'll be located along the western side of the, the building in a small little alcove area that is located um, adjacent to the uh, equipment room, um, or utilities room for the hotel. And it's currently just gravel surface in and around that backside of the building. So we do have a slight encroachment into the 100 foot buffer zone. We're approximately 90 feet away from the closest uh, BVW boundary. Right. Okay. Um, and I can flip to another page showing a little bit better detail. Um, here again, nearest BVW is in green, 35 foot non disturbed, 100 foot buffer zone. And then this is the small uh, ground equipment pad by Verizon Wireless. It'll be a, uh, a concrete slab and it'll be some uh, equipment cabinets that'll be housed on top of it and then surrounded by a security fence. Okay. <coughs> and we'll also install erosion control measures, either straw walls or sill fence. Thank you. Uh, just to make sure that there's no adverse effect to the nearby wetlands. So we feel that the project represents minimal activity within the buffer zone and we'd request that a uh, suggest maybe a negative three determination for the project and with that I'll open to any questions okay and I was there at the site visit today and uh, it's very you know uh, small area it's very close to the building you know it would be out right up next to the building mm -hmm. this little cutout um, all of, there's a fence right now and is there a retaining wall on on the other side of that fence or is it just sloped down I, I couldn't recall yeah there is so um, what Shayla is referencing is that there's a detention stormwater detention basin located in this area of the project and there is a it's surrounded by a security fence like a four foot hall four foot high chain link fence um, and there is along this side here there is a short retaining wall okay. that separates the hotel from the detention basin. By short meaning as tall as the tables? It's probably about four feet. Okay. Around four feet, maybe five feet in some areas, you know, particularly near the outlaw. The outfall of the basin, which discharges to the intermittent stream, is located approximately here on the, the playa. Right. Yep. But uh, it's pretty, pretty far away from that. And then the equipment literally cannot go past that fence or else they're hitting into the fence yeah exactly uh, so having this erosion controls up along that area and there's minimal digging um, and you what I think you mentioned at our visit that any soil uh, that needs to be dug out would be removed from the property is that correct that's correct okay. yeah there's uh, there's probably about 12 maybe no more than 12 inches of gravel in the surface and we think that this this they needed for probably fire um, and safety the, there's a large swath of gravel that surrounds the backside of the hotel. So they need a hardened surface. They mm -hmm. use gravel material. They may just cast the gravel with the other gravel, but any of the underlying soil, that'll be live loaded out during the project. Okay. Do you have any estimates of how much soil that would be? Like, I don't know how deep this goes down. So there's a 12 inches of gravel that would be removed. It'd then... probably just be, um, you know, a small truckload or two. Mm -hmm. So we're probably talking about yeah. What was that? What was that, Gary? How many yards? We understand yards. Okay. Uh, is it yeah, it'd probably, yards, be, probably be less than 10 yards of material. Okay. Less than 10 what yards. Truck load? What was that, Gary? One good full truckload. Right. Basically 10 yards. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> And that's just for that's just for equipment. The facilities are going to be on the roof, and you're not going to be 
accessing that site, that part of the plot, unless there's a problem with the things on the roof, and then you're just going to drive in with a pickup truck, right? That's correct. Yep. If for for maintenance of facility, um, you know, maybe a technician would, you know, monitor it or visit it once every month or two. Right. It is monitored electronically at their switch station 24-7. So if for some reason one of the antennas is bad or isn't operating properly, they'll send out a technician. But otherwise, regular maintenance is maybe once every couple of months. Okay. And they would just drive up and pick up truck. There, this is kind of a hardscape. Um, this patio and a grill area here. Um, you can get a vehicle back here, but a technician would probably just park out front and just walk out back okay. unless they needed some equipment to get... But there is vehicle access to the back as well. Okay. Good. And then for installation of the actual rooftop facilities, there would just be temporary staging of equipment like cranes or pickup trucks on the existing gravel area. They wouldn't be doing any ground disturbance, and it would all just be, you know, I think you said maybe two months tops for completion. Yeah, that's that's correct. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to start doing it now? If uh, after we issue our Termination so it has whatever. to go through planning board approval as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, from what I understand, it is in the build program for Verizon Wireless for next year. So they would probably start construction next year. Okay. So um, if the board were to issue a permit, you would have three years from the date of issuance. So right. Um, we yeah. you're you're covered. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's all that we were concerned about. Does anybody else on the board have any other questions? No. Let's say no. Let's go. Let's go over. Uh, are you are you are you copacetic with it, Gary? Yes, I am. Okay. So, request for determination of act applicability. Um, Is there a negative three? Yep. I think so. And that's it. Or is there any other one? Okay, let's have a, a motion from the board for a negative three determination. I'll make it. Okay, a motion by Gary, uh, by Gordon, seconded by Steve. Um, all those in favor of the motion can signify by saying aye. 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 Are, you, are you good with it, Gary? Aye. Thank you. Okay, and now... Uh, Request for determination of uh, applicability. Any, any other comments from the board? Okay. So, uh, same story I said earlier. Um, I'll try to get this to you. And you said that there was an address that you would um, send me so that I will get to you, not just random corporate filing cabinet nowhere. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you an okay. email either tonight or first thing in the morning. Okay. So, Thank you. Appreciate cool. your help. Yeah, of course, yeah. and I'll, I'll make sure I get that to you. I um, just need you folks to uh, make sure you sign, and right. Steve is here, so we right. can have three signatures. Right, good. Okay, um, all those in favor of, uh, okay. Uh, we already did didn't, that. Well, we did the determination of mm -hmm. applicability. Yep. We did the negative three. We yep. didn't do the. Yep, you did a motion, Gordon made a motion. We did a motion, we, we need a vote on it. We got a vote oh, on it. Oh, I thought you already did. No, oh, we right. voted on the no. negative three. So all those in favor of the mo uh, well, first of all, stop. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing and to uh, did, and a request for uh, applicability of 350 Russell Street. I'll make it. Uh, motion by Gordon. Second. Second by Steve. All those in favor. Um, all those in favor of the motion. Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Gary? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, you got your request for determination of applicability. Great. Thank you very much, folks. Have Thank a good night you. and have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you. you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, what's the next page? Uh, uh, cool. uh, signature. Not a pamphlet? It's about violence. Agent. Secret agent. <laughs>
Secret agent of the wetlands. <laughs> okay, request for a certificate of compliance. Uh, 170-246 at 15 to 29 Russell Street. Pride Real Estate seeks a, com seeks a complete certificate of compliance for work done under DEP file number 17-246. A partial COC was issued October 9, 2018, and the original or and the original order of conditions was issued in 2015. Uh, site visit conducted today by Shyla Davis and I was there and we talked with Jim. Oh, <coughs> okay, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay, you got the floor. Thank you. Again, uh, Jim Channing of Pride 246 Cottage Street in Springfield. Uh, as mentioned, this is the, the Pride gas station on the western end of town, mm -hmm. close to the bridge. Uh, the address of 15 through 29 Russell Street. Uh, again, 2015 came in we had the order of conditions when we were set to open the gas station was when the majority of the construction was complete in 2018 we had a partial certificate of compliance which was issued uh, the caveat being that um, it was only partial because it was not a full vegetation yet all of the vegetation specifically in the retention basin uh, wasn't fully grown again October 2018 wasn't done uh, now we were there today <laughs> again it, it, there's no reason it took four, four <laughs> years especially as we noted in the summer with this drought uh, the vegetation was there sooner uh, but we are here asking for a complete certificate of compliance now uh, I can tell you that in my opinion it is fully vegetated uh, I let the, the site speak for itself though okay so Edwin and I went out there today and looked at the detention basins there Looking at a detention basin and seeing growth <laughs> in the end of November is tough. <laughs> and it appears that it is, you did what you said you were going to do. So, um, it's dead. <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's, it's dead. It was a dry year. It was mm -hmm. the end of November today. Sure. And it's probably going to come right back it's probably going to be green and luscious and everything in in the spring of next year there were some mosses and some yep. uh, lamb's ear i think whatever you know the nice fuzzy plant yeah <laughs> yep. so, and i don't think there were any bare spots i saw but no. maybe there was certainly green it wasn't as, as lively as no, it could be in april right okay. yeah <laughs> we'll it could be to. but um okay does and does anybody have any other comments for the certificate of compliance for 15 to 29 Russell Street. Do you have any other questions? I don't. No. I'll make a motion to uh, move for accepted certificate of compliance. Uh, is that a motion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll second it. Seconded by Gordon. I'll <coughs> okay. Um, do we have to uh, uh, notify? Uh, any further discussion? And is there anything further? Um, I would just say uh, that the original order of uh, the original uh, order of conditions and the partial certificate of compliance that I have, um, there were some ongoing conditions in the previous uh, certificate of compliance, um, and those ongoing conditions um, I think were were restricted to uh, the vegetation related things. But I didn't know if uh, we wanted to just quickly go over yeah. the conditions from the last time. I would, uh uh, all right, so last time we got the special conditions. Um, okay, construction's done, so that's not relevant anymore. Right. Um, okay, grading is done, compensatory storage is done. Uh, uh, let's see. Hold on. We have the plan. Uh, well, there's uh, one condition said that the present and all future owners, managers, and contractors shall follow the long-term stormwater operation and maintenance measures plan with revision date of 7-14-16. Um, so I don't know if that one would be um, something you'd like to continue because it relates to future owners and the stormwater um, maintenance 
Mm-hmm. We should continue that, yes. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, so condition number 26, uh, and then the snow storage is to follow the approved plan, which shows snow storage only in the back. If in a particular winter there's too much snow to fit on the approved storage location, the owner will have the excess removed from the property and disposed of in a legal manner, not in wetlands or water bodies. A copy of the approved snow storage plan is attached to the order. Um, so that one I might recommend. Yes, continue that. Yep. Um, that we continue these. I'm yeah. So, so those to ones in, to to be continuing conditions, um, right. or ongoing conditions, as it right. says, um, just because they refer to snow, which is going to hopefully continue happening yeah. uh, for a little while. <laughs> and the mm -hmm. ongoing future owners uh, adhering to plans. Okay. Okay. Um, what do you What do you think, Gary? What do we do ne next? We just make a motion. <laughs> Okay, I requ um, is there a motion? I'll make one. Okay, we have a motion by Gordon, seconded by... Second, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, seconded by Gary. Okay, okay um, we're gonna cert uh, request a certificate of compliance. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Gary? Aye. Okay, it's you. Aye. Gentlemen. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes. And Have a good Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Yep. All right. All right. And other business. Yeah. We have bills to pay. <laughs> uh, well, so um, on Friday last week, I had the opportunity to go to the annual meeting of the Association of Massachusetts Wetland Scientists, um, and that is a, just an annual thing. It was the first time they were doing it in person. Um, I found out about it last minute and signed up to go. Um, it cost $225, and we have budget left um, for the rest of the fiscal year that's for training. Um, so I wanted to make sure that you were cool with me charging that to our training budget. <laughs> that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. I'm glad yeah. that you're doing that. That's good. Okay. Yep. And it was great. I would to approve. What's that? I would make a motion to approve the expenditure. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Are you all set, Gary? I'm thinking about it. Yes, aye. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> well, I already spent the money. Yeah, she already <laughs> spent the money and she already went to the uh, seminar. So. It was really fun. Okay, where, where was well, it? It was at the post here sitting in the chair. What? It sucks to be sitting here in the chair watching you. Oh. Yeah. We should be here. Well. Yeah, it was um, at the Botanical Gardens at Tower Hill in Boylston, Mass. Uh, so unfortunately, I had to take the pike, but I made it there and back in one piece. Oh, good, uh, good for you. So it was good. I actually ran into somebody that I went to school with and a couple of people that I've uh, been on email chains with, um, like from the state, so like uh, a couple of people from DEP and. Uh, so it was well, well yeah, worth it. It was, it was worth <laughs> it. There were some great presentations. Um, <coughs> good, good chance to meet some people. Good. Yeah. All right. Any other bills? No. Okay. I, I don't spend a lot of money, guys. <laughs> no, you don't. Are there any? Are there any updates? Um, updates are. I'm still here. You're still here. We're all still here. Yep. Right it's now. Cold outside. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, did anybody have a chance to review the minutes? Did you have a chance to review the minutes? Okay. Are we gonna? Uh, Approve the minutes Why don't as we do presented. Next month? Hmm? Do it next month. Okay. We're going to pass on the minutes and we're going to do them next month. Do we need a motion for that? Do we need a motion? Yeah, let, let's do a motion. I'll make one. Okay. I'll make second. a second. Uh, motion by Gordon, uh, seconded by Gary to continue the minutes to next month. Uh, continued. Continued to 12, 3, 13. Uh, yeah, 13. 13, right? Yep. yep. Okay. 12, 13. All those, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, upcoming learning opportunities. Um, I didn't put it on the agenda because I found out about it after uh, they posted that on next Tuesday, so November 29th, 
the Massachusetts Society of Municipal Conservation Professionals. Uh, they are hosting an hour and a half long networking, like burning questions kind of webinar where it's going to be a little more free form, lots of people that are either agents or board members meeting to just go over all kinds of questions that we have for like, how do we do our jobs better? Like what are, are the nuances of this kind of situation? And kind of like picking uh, the brains of some really experienced people that know the regs very well and know the rules. So I'm planning to attend. Um, and if you guys can make it, uh, that'd be awesome. Or if you have any questions that you'd like me to ask. Okay. Um, that are you going to go in prepared. person? It's, um, it's only via Zoom. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, you know, and and that is the, the 29th is a Tuesday yeah, it's next Tuesday um, and I can send you an email about it with um, the zoom information and everything but if you have any questions um, related to the work that we do and why we do things a certain way or whether the way we're doing it is the best or correct or whatever just let me know okay and I think that it's going to be a great opportunity to just you know Bullshit. Even hear what other people's questions are, because uh, they might ask things that I wouldn't even think to ask. Mm. So, I think you yeah. got it. Is it. Was it free? Yeah, it's free. It's all it, it's all free. I try to advertise the free stuff to you guys yeah, <laughs> as Thank much you. as I can. Awesome. A really fun time. What's that? It sounds like a really great fun time. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll I think it'll be really really helpful. It's just a bunch of con con people chatting about. Issues. Issues that we have <laughs> and how to fix them. <laughs> so I think it'll be a good think tank. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, All right. I will entertain a motion to adjourn because we've come to the bottom of the agenda. I'll make a motion. We got a motion by Gordon, seconded okay. by Steve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.